Hey everyone, Rob Berthoff here. Excited to continue the Bible Prophecy Series uh, here in the Theological Track. And, and this course is, uh, this module is going to be dealing with the 70 uh, weeks, right? The 69 weeks and the one week time period um, that ultimately talks about um, proving when, um, uh, when the Messiah would come. So really proving the legitimacy of the Bible. Now, understand that I'm going to do this quickly, um, but this deserves a really a deep dive there's a lot of extra nuances about this uh, that I'm going to go through um, quickly because what I want to do is ultimately just you know try and give the most condensed version of this. A lot of my courses are very, very in detailed. I want to create something that's just easy to understand. So we're going to dive straight into chapter 9. And here we talk about, you know, there's this interesting verse in, in uh, verse 24 that says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in an everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision of the prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. So, a lot to unpack here. First, we have a time period of 70 weeks. We want to acknowledge that. Uh, second, um, this is going to, at the end of the 70 weeks, there will be a, um, a finish to transgression, an end of sins, um, making reconciliation for the iniquity, right? And all of this is essentially to bring in an everlasting righteousness. So we're going to figure out what that means. And then the next part of this is to seal up the vision, right? To um, ultimately to fulfill this vision and then to anoint the most holy. Okay, so those are the two things we're going to be looking for. Um, let's move to the next, the next uh, verse and figure out if we can figure out any more details of when the 70 weeks um, would start. And in the next verse here, Gabriel speaking, and he says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore the building, uh, to restore to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. And the street shall be built again and the wall and even in troublous times. Now, when we look in history, there's actually a, a few commands. So what we're looking for is, is a command for when Jerusalem was rebuilt. But it's not just the temple, because notice here it says the street and the wall. So we need to find a time that the wall was also rebuilt in Jerusalem. Okay. So what is interesting here is that this is ultimately a prophecy that says six, uh, essentially, you know, this 69-week period after the command to rebuild Jerusalem, the Messiah would come, right? And, it'll, and it gives two time periods that we're going to be dealing with, a seven weeks and a three score and two weeks, so it's uh, 62 weeks. Okay, so we're going to look at both those time periods. But the big picture here, and it's interesting, is to put this into perspective, Daniel was born 600 years before Jesus. So if Daniel could predict the exact date of the baptism, right, and the crucifixion and the cutting off of Israel, that would have to be some significant proof that the Bible is real. So let's tackle these two, these two date periods that we have here. The first one is seven weeks, and the second is three score and two weeks. So if we do the math on this, seven weeks, and let's break this into days. So seven times seven is 49. And then if we remember in the first module in this series, that time prophecy would be a day for a year. So that 49 days becomes 49 years. Okay, so the first time segment is 49 years. Now, the second time segment, uh, we've got a score is 20. So three score in two weeks, uh, a score is 20. So three score would be three times 20 is 60. Now we add those extra two weeks, and that gives us 62. So we're looking at a 62-week time period. Now we convert that into days. 62 times 7 is 434 days. Now we convert that into time prophecy, a day for a year, so 300 uh, so 434 years. Those are our two main time periods that we're dealing with. Seven weeks, 62 weeks, ultimately a total of 69 weeks or a total of 483 years. So again, this is the timeline and we, we mentioned that we need to then figure out where this uh, timeline sits, right? The question is, when does the 69 weeks start? And we remember already that it needs to start from a decree to rebuild Jerusalem, okay? So where do we find a decree that tells us when Jerusalem, uh, when this decree was um, uh, was started, was, was issued, was commanded, okay? And in Ezra 7, 13, 
we read that Artaxerxes made a decree that all of the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites in his realm, which are minded to go in their own free will to Jerusalem to go with thee. It continues. We find uh, that there's a time frame for this. The seventh year of Artaxerxes, the king, right? So this, this um, was the first day of the fifth month of the seventh year is when this decree was made. So now we just have to figure out um, when, when did Artaxerxes um, take uh, his throne and then add seven uh, to that. Okay, so we can, we can actually find this. Uh, history tells us that the first year of Artaxerxes was the fall of, six, of 464 BC. So if we add seven years, that calculates the seventh year from the fall of 458 to the fall of 457. Now, again, I'm going over this pretty quickly here. Um, in another course, I'll dive in deeper of, of um, you know, or you can also research this as well. There's actually two other decrees, but the two other decrees don't also include um, the rebuilding of the city as a whole. Um, so that's, that's an interesting point. Um, so we're going to base this date on the fall of 457 BC. Now, we can, uh, we're going to, this kind of, we can kind of lay this over the uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel chapter 2 time frame, right? And what we're going to look at now is how does this, uh, what, is it, what does the time period look like if we add that first seven weeks? Now, the first seven weeks was there to um, uh, rebuild the temple of Jerusalem. So let's add that forward. We count this forward to seven prophetic weeks. Um, or 49 years from 457, we come up to 408 BC, which there's the rebuilding of Jerusalem. The next we're looking at here is um, the entire 69 week prophecy. So we already have that first seven weeks. Now let's add on the next 62 weeks um, and get the uh, and see where this lands us. So if we count through it, we actually land on 27 AD. And if you're doing the math along with me, remember that. Um, there's no zero year. So when we count, we count 1 BC, 1 AD, um, and then forward. So there's no zero year, right? So 27 AD, what happened in 27 AD? Now, we're looking for the Messiah to come. So we should be looking in, in the scriptures and getting a sense on, um, you know, when Jesus started his ministry um, and figure out, is that does that date line up? In Luke 3, um, we find here, that Jesus was baptized, right? But it also tells us a very specific time frame when Jesus was baptized. It says that in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea and Herod being the tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip the tetrarch of Eutria and on the region of, you know, okay. So the big picture is this. We can base it off of any of those dates, but the, the, the main one we can base it off of that's easiest is we have the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius. Okay, so when did Tiberius rule? Again, history is really straightforward. History tells us it was on October 20th, 12 AD, that he received his co-precepts authority. So this is, he became sole ruler in, in, in AD 14, but he uh, got his authority in 12 AD. So all we have to do now is add, because he was in the 15th year of his reign, so add 15 and 12 AD, 15 years plus 12 AD brings us to 27 AD. So Jesus was baptized in 27 AD. Specifically, um, we find out in the fall. And it's interesting that Mark tells us that at Jesus' baptism, he said, the time is fulfilled. This is actually referring to the, the 62 weeks and the seven week time prophecy, or the total of the 69 week time prophecy. So really beautiful. I mean, that alone is like crazy impressive. The fact that the Bible tells us when Jesus would come and it goes down to boom, exact. But it's not, doesn't even end there. We continue here. If we go back to uh, verse 26 in Daniel 9, we read that there's 62 prophetic weeks, right? The, the seven and the 62, part of the 69, that the Messiah would be crucified for our sakes. And it continues that the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. So the Messiah would be cut off. We know this as being crucified, okay? Um, but not for himself, right? He was crucified for our sins, for our sake. And then interesting that after that time period, 
the city and the sanctuary would be destroyed. And we know this happened um, by, Roman, uh, by Rome in AD 70. So super interesting there. We can explain what this, you know, we know again that Jesus was crucified, but let's actually, you know, find it in the Bible. So Isaiah 53, 8 says, He was cut off out of the land of the living, so, so, so killed, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. So Isaiah is saying that, that for our transgressions, the transgressions of the Israelites, then literal, now spiritual, uh, that Jesus was crucified, was cut off. So we know that after the 69 weeks, Jesus was baptized, and at, after that point, Jesus would be cut off. Now, we can get some more clues on when that would be. If we go, go back to Daniel 9, and now we're in verse 27, we read that Jesus, the, who is the son of the everlasting covenant, right, will confirm the covenant with many for one week. Again, this is a, um, we're going to cover the rest of this verse in a little bit, but, but again, this is a, um, a prophetic one week. So we're going to be tacking on, adding one week on the end of the 69-week period. So 69 weeks plus one week gives us a total of 70 weeks. But we're talking about this, this particular one week right now that takes us from 27 AD right, up until 34 AD. And so that's the time frame that we know that we're dealing with, right? A, a one prophetic week from 27 AD to 34 AD. Now, let's go back to this. In the middle of that week, so the halfway point of, of seven years is three and a half years. So three and a half years after 27 AD, Jesus would cause the sacrificial system to end or cease. So halfway through the seven and a half year, the seven years is three and a half years. That brings us from the fall of 27 AD to the spring of AD 31. And for centuries, the Jews had slain the Passover lamb on you know, Nisan 14 at Friday at you know, 3 p.m. Uh, and Christ is crucified at the exact same time. So what's interesting is that we're actually seeing the revelation, uh, seeing the fulfillment, I should say, of this um, you know, sacrificial system that had been going on uh, ever since you know, it was in, you know, given to the Israelites. So Jesus, the sacrificial lamb, right, fulfilled the sacrificial rite, the ritual, in the sanctuary system you know, here on earth, right? Type meant anti-type. Jesus' death on the cross did away with all the ceremonies which foreshadowed to his coming. So this is why studying the sanctuary system is so important because it gives us this clear understanding of Jesus' role, both what he did on here on earth and also what he's doing as our high priest in heaven, right? So 30, uh, 27 AD, Jesus uh, is baptized. That's like the laver. Again, you got to study the sanctuary system. Um, the altar of burnt offering, 31 AD. Also, Jesus then goes into the holy place, which is what the high priest does. In Hebrews, we're told that, don't you know that you have a, um, a high priest, um, you know, uh, made in, um, uh, in a, was it in a sanctuary without hands, something along this line? Hebrews somewhere. Uh, the point is this. I cover all of this in the plan of redemption. I just highly recommend taking a look at this, seeing how this whole thing was 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 pointing forward to the Christ's real role with us. And so all of the earthly sanctuary uh, aspects were just a foreshadowing of the heavenly sanctuary. Now, let's talk about um, the statement Jesus made uh, just before his crucifixion when he was, um, he prophesied, right, that here and after you shall see the Son of Man sitting in the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And, and this is this prophecy that Jesus saying that there will be a, uh, at his second coming, there would be a special resurrection where those who were at Jesus' trial and crucifixion would see him return in glory. And hearing this, the Jewish high priest rent his clothes. Now, this is significant because we read that a priest was never to, um, to tear his garments, right? In Leviticus 10.6, it says that you're not to rend your garments lest ye die, and the wrath become on the whole people. So this is a significant event. If the high priest were to tear his clothes, he would die, and not only him, but the entire people would have the wrath. Now, this is interesting because when Caiaphas, right, uh, rent his clothes, 
This act was done to influence the judges and secure Christ's condemnation. But the high priest had condemned himself. For the law of God, he was disqualified for the priesthood, and he had pronounced a death sentence upon himself. And ultimately, we'll find the entire uh, Israelites uh, were cut off. Going back to this you know, ceasing of the sacrificial system, we read that at the time of Jesus' death, the veil in the sanctuary was torn from top to bottom. So this was signifying that the earthly sacrificial was no longer um, valid, right? Type had meant anti-type, right? The priest had rent its clothes. The veil has been rent. And what's more interesting, it's, it's equally as interesting, is that what it exposed behind the curtain was the fact that God was no longer there. God was no longer present in the most holy place, and the Jews were carrying on a form of religion on the outside, but it was all for show. There was, there was nothing. God was not actually with them. They were carrying on ceremonies and systems that pointed to the Messiah, and yet when the Messiah came, they completely disregarded and even killed him. There's a lesson here. Now, there's a lot of lessons here, but interesting lesson here is, you know, are we doing the same are we carrying on a form of godliness and saying, oh yeah, I go to church, do this, but are we actually living, um, you know, the gospel? Are we actually living, um, you know, do we have Christ inside of us? Is Christ inside our uh, most holy place, so to speak, right? Speaking of, you know, do you not know that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit? So, we read again here in Acts uh, thirteen forty six, where Paul says, it was necessary that the word of God uh, should first been spoken to you, but seeing that you put it away from you, seeing that you disregarded it, and judge yourself unworthy of eternal life, we'll go give this to the Gentiles. So because literal Israel rejected the Messiah and the gospel message, that same message was then passed to spiritual Israel. Now this concludes that week period. So we're looking now at the culmination of that one week from 27 to 34, and that the, uh, the event that happened at the end of this period that, that triggered the close of probation for the Jews was the stoning of Stephen. And uh, Paul in Acts um, writes about this event. Now what's interesting is this guy here, Saul, that's holding the jackets of those that are stoning Stephen, later converts to Paul. And he wrote most of the New Testament, including Acts, that we get the story from. So in conclusion, the 70 weeks, which started with Daniel 9.24, um, you know, and, and pointed from the ministry uh, pointed forward to the ministry of 8027, proving that the law of God could be kept, bringing in everlasting righteousness, and and then ultimately in 8031, Jesus then ascends to heaven, and Jesus was anointed as our high priest. So these uh, the 70 weeks brought about these two events. Um, what's fascinating to me is that there's one more time prophecy that actually runs along the same line. And it's the 2300 days that also deals with the heavenly sanctuary. So while the 69 weeks dealt with the earthly sanctuary, so to speak, right? The uh, wrapping up of the earthly, the 2300 speaks of when Christ moves from the holy place to the most holy place. This one is fascinating. I'm excited for you to watch that. But it, like I said, there's so much more that you can take from this. I just want to keep this one kind of quick and, um, you know, trying to condense it as much as possible. But know that there's a lot more you can get into. Uh, the takeaway here is simply that, look, Christ, um, you know, died for our sins. And interestingly, the Bible even predicted that to the year that he did that. And so the Bible can be trusted and we can look at it as an inspired source. Uh, look forward to uh, chatting with you in the next um, in the next course, the next module in the 2300. Talk soon.